It's time to answer the big question that literally everyone has been asking, iPhone 14 Pro Max or Google Pixel 7 Pro? I've been using the Google Pixel 7 Pro for about a week now and I've had the iPhone 14 Pro Max for nearly a month, I think. They are very similar phones. The differences between build quality, usability, camera performance, general performance is very, very narrow. But they do have their differences and they do have their pros and cons, and I think I found most of them. Now this isn't going to be a really in-depth comparison with loads of benchmarks and stats and bar graphs and stuff, because I don't do that, I can't be bothered. It's going to be a much simpler look at the iPhone 14 Pro Max versus the Pixel 7 Pro. I'm going to look at six things-ish that you need to consider if you're thinking between these two phones. Starting with price, in the UK you'll pay £849 for the 128GB version of the Pixel 7 Pro. If you want to take that up to 256GB, you'll have to pay £949. And this is really competitive pricing from Google when you bear in mind that the iPhone 14 in most regions has had quite a price hike. And the base model iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is 128GB, the same storage as this, costs £1,199. That's a 350 quid premium over this. And if you want the 256 gigabyte version of this, that's over 1300 quid. And yes, you do get more storage options with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but if we take it up to one terabyte, which is a lot of storage for a phone, that takes the price up to 1749 pounds. So there's absolutely no comparison when it comes to pricing if that is your main driver for choosing between these phones. The Pixel 7 Pro destroys the iPhone 14 Pro Max in value. Design and build quality. Now there was a time in the not too distant past when the iPhone was always the more premium phone. That really isn't the case anymore. There are so many well-made Android phones on the market and the Pixel 7 Pro is really up there. Both of these phones feel bulletproof and they've both got this very kind of polished frame going around the side, which separates them from their lower versions, you know, the regular Pixel 7 and the regular iPhone 14. Because of that, they do feel premium and it does feel like you're getting a lot for your money. The Pixel 7 Pro is slightly lighter than the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's also slightly taller and a smidgen narrower, but you won't really notice it. They do look side by side like pretty much the same size phone. There are two issues with the Pixel 7 Pro though that are worth mentioning. The first one is that it is a very, very slippy phone. Don't get me wrong, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is a pretty slippy phone as well, but this you can put on pretty much any flat surface and it will probably fall off. The other reason you might need a case is because of this band, this metal band that goes around the camera housing. I found that that gets scratched quite easily. By comparison, it's quite difficult to scratch and mark the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And the look of these two phones will very much be a personal preference. I love both of them. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is that classic iPhone shape and look, which has been around for many years. Whereas the Pixel 7 Pro is an evolution of the Pixel design, and I really like what Google have done with it. So design, that's up to you, but build quality and feel, the iPhone just pips it because of those two issues I mentioned earlier, but it's so, so close. Now, as mentioned earlier, I'm not gonna give you loads of benchmarks to compare the performance of these two phones. Instead, I'm gonna look at it from a normal user perspective. And a normal user is me. I don't do any gaming on these phones. I don't do anything particularly outlandish in terms of you know, power user stuff. I just use these as smartphones. And with that in mind, there's very little separating the two of them. And the reason for that is really simple. The iPhone 14 Pro Max has Apple's own silicon in there. That makes it very quick. It also means that the gubbins inside this phone is perfectly married to iOS. This has Google's own chip, the Tensor G2, and you're also getting the purest version of Android on these phones. And when you combine those two factors, it's the same thing as the iPhone. You're getting a phone that is completely tuned for what's inside. And that means that both of these, when you're flying around the operating system, feel very quick and very smooth. And the other factor that drives that is the displays. And there are some differences between these two phones with their screens. But again, you really have to think about them to know what they are. Firstly, they both have variable refresh rate screens that go right up to 100 20 hertz. The iPhone actually has a better contrast ratio. It has a higher peak brightness. This has slightly higher DPI, so it's got a slightly sharper screen. But again, in normal everyday use, when you put them side by side, you can't tell those differences. The brightness, for instance, even though this has 2000 nits of peak brightness outdoors, and this has, I think, 1600, they both are very legible in direct sunlight. They're both OLED, which means you get very nice deep 
blacks, very nice contrast and better battery performance as well. And they both support HDR. The only difference really is that the iPhone has True Tone, which gives you a more natural white balance. And it also has the Dynamic Island. I go into Dynamic Island a lot more on my review of this phone, which I'll link to above, but that's more of an OS feature, I think, than a display feature. So display wise, they're just as good. It's the exact same size screen as well, 6.7 inch, which is a big phone, but if you're into your big phones, these are two of the best examples. Oh, and a quick note on biometrics, they both have facial recognition to unlock the phone, and they're both as quick as each other in that respect. The Pixel 7 Pro also has a fingerprint reader just beneath the screen, which I absolutely love. They fixed it on this version. It wasn't very good on the 6 and the 6a, but it's nice and quick on the 7 Pro. And I wish Apple would add it to the iPhone as well. I don't know why they don't. It doesn't affect the screen on this at all. And for whatever reason, I always go for the fingerprint reader rather than the facial recognition. So performance, display, and biometrics, I'll lump all that together as one. It's a tie, unless you really want a fingerprint reader and unless you really want to be on Dynamic Island. Comparing iOS and Android is getting increasingly difficult because I think we've reached an era now where both operating systems are so similar in terms of core functionality. And this is particularly the case if you opt for a Pixel phone like the Pixel 7 Pro because you're getting the best version of Android. It's completely unfiddled with. It hasn't got any of the rubbish that the likes of Samsung put on top of it. It is pure Android and it's very, very good. And I found that app support across both platforms, for me at least, is pretty good, even though the iOS apps are normally a little bit more polished than their Android counterparts. So it all comes down to your preference for the ecosystem. And personally, I am welded in Apple's. And yes, I know that's how Apple get you and I know, I need to somehow break free of it at some stage, but it's the small things that make the ecosystem within the iPhone and the Mac, etc., so important for me. I'll give you one example, handoff. So that is where you can transfer stuff from one Apple device to another. I use this all the time. So for instance, I'll copy something on my Mac, like a URL or something, and then paste it seamlessly onto my iPhone. So that's my preference for the ecosystem, and it makes this part of the comparison a little bit unfair because it's based completely almost on that copy-paste thing. But the good news is that if you're not bothered about Apple at all and you'd much rather stick with Android and the Pixel Buds and the Pixel Watch that's on the way, then you can do that. I think it's time we talked cameras now, really, and I'm not going to do a great big deep dive into this either because you can get very lost in this stuff. And the really important thing to remember with camera comparisons with smartphones is that it's very, very subjective. So all I can do is give you my opinion on these next four images, and then you can make up your own mind about which one you prefer. We'll start with a selfie cam, and you can immediately see the difference in the white balance here. I think there's a touch of magenta on the Pixel 7 Pro photo, and there's a fair amount of contrast versus the iPhone's effort. And this is a common trait of Pixel cameras. It's one of the reasons I like them so much. But if we take another look, you can see that the iPhone has completely nailed the exposure on my face. You can see me more clearly. The whole image actually is brighter and it's dealt with the dynamic range much better than the Pixel. This next image of London really reveals the difference between these two camera systems, I think. I think the Pixel 7 Pro shot here has far more impact. It's like someone's gone into Lightroom and just nudged up that clarity slider just enough. I think the colors are slightly softer as well compared to the iPhone and the iPhone totally gets the white balance wrong. You can see a hint of green throughout the entire image. And I just feel like the iPhone version of this photo needs a lot of tweaking to bring it alive. It's a similar story with this next image. I think the Pixel does lose a few points here because it does have softer edges at the corners, but I still much prefer the way it's processed the entire image. There's just all that clarity, that contrast. It's really punchy without being too much. Lastly, we have night mode and there's no competition here. It's worth noting that this photo was taken well after sunset. It was very, very dark, particularly around those trees and the lake. But you can just see how much detail has been drawn out by the Pixel around those trees. Both phones have done a good job in keeping the image sharp, and they both do handle night photography very well anyway. But again, I just love what the Pixel has done. It's just brought everything out of that photo, it's brought it alive, and there's no need to do any tweaking. When it comes to video, it's very close. They both produce great 4K footage. But I do think the iPhone just pips it, mainly because of better image stabilization and a much better cinematic mode. Cinematic mode was added to the iPhone 13 last year. It wasn't very good then. It's been updated for the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, and it's very good now. It's not perfect, but as we can see in this comparison between the Pixel 7 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the iPhone version just looks a lot better. In fact, the Pixel version feels very rough and ready at times. So for me, video-wise, the iPhone wins. If that's your main thing, 
get the iPhone. But when it comes to photos, personally, I much prefer the Pixel. I think the last important point of comparison is the battery life. Now, again, my results are based on normal use. It's me using these phones for checking email, using the internet, watching YouTube videos, checking YouTube studio, social media, taking the odd phone call, all normal stuff. And for that, they are completely inseparable. The batteries in both of these phones will power them for two days. That's about standard now for phones of this size. However, my recent trip to London to review this and the Pixel 7 did put both of these phones to test. And basically, I was walking around shooting 4K video, taking loads of photos, and very rarely putting these two phones down. They both had full charge at about 6 a.m. that day, and because of that very heavy use, by three o'clock, they were pretty much exhausted. The iPhone had a bit more left in the tank, but it wasn't much. Now again, that isn't normal everyday use. People don't shoot 4K video with their phones all day. You can run them out fairly quickly if you have a seriously heavy day with them. But again, when it comes to normal use, these two phones tie on battery life. There's so little separating these two phones, guys. Honestly, if I wasn't welded in the Apple ecosystem, I'd switch to the Pixel 7 Pro tomorrow. But then again, this is also the best iPhone Apple has ever made. So it comes down to, I think, two things. Pricing, if you are very budget conscious, and that is the main driver for your next phone purchase, there's no competition get the Pixel. Beyond that, it really does come down to the ecosystem. So if you're an Apple person, if you've got a Mac and you've got iPads and things like that, then the iPhone is the obvious choice. But even if you are an Apple person and you're getting a bit bored of the iPhone, there's a really good alternative now. This is one of the hardest comparisons I've done because they're just so good. It's a bit like cars these days. You can't really buy a bad car. And these two phones prove that you can't really buy a bad flagship phone. Oh, that's not true. If you buy the Samsung S22 Ultra in the UK, you do end up with a bad phone. Put that to one side though. Today, when it comes to Google versus Apple, it's a tie. If you're swaying more towards the Pixel 7 Pro, keep watching for a link to my full review of this phone and also its smaller brother, the regular Pixel 7.